Hello. And welcome in to another episode of Farm to Fame. I am Kelsey Wingert. That is Peter Moyland. That is Maddie Mass. None of us matter. No, we do not. Because we have the specialist guest on with us today yes, that we're we happy about. Hi, Sean. Sean Kazmar Jr. is on the show well, with us today. Thank you. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Pete. Hi, Matt. Sean, you know, this is this is probably we've interviewed a couple of people. <laughs> Okay. But this is the first time that I've interviewed someone that I've known beforehand. Okay. So I have zero preparation and it's just going to go straight conversational. Yeah, we don't need prep. You are one of the best teammates I've ever played with. Thank you. And you've also stated the fact that you've played with a lot of people and I have played with a bunch of people too. And you are legitimately up there top five all-time teammates and you have remained that way. Wow. Congrats, Sean. That means a lot. <laughs> From the moment I met you, dude, it was it was like an instant connection. And we just figured out we both yeah. had the boys to men as our first ever concert. I think that's mm. what it was. Mm. I, it had to have been. Like, it was divine intervention, definitely. Yeah. Do you got any embarrassing uh, Peter stories, Sean? Just Ooh, right off the let's bat. Let's just get it off the bat, oh please. Gosh. Just get them all off the bat. <laughs> what not to... Well, I mean, obviously, the shirt off you know, in the club and as hard as his nipples were on a daily basis. Uh, um, we just saw that. Know. Excuse me, Kelsey. <laughs> you just sent the wrong message on this podcast. First of all, I've kept my shirt on all the time during this podcast, just for those viewing at home. I don't strip down naked to, to introduce anyone else. Hmm. You've just given wrong messages. Well, you know, it's normal clubhouse stuff to, you know, yeah. usually guys with, good physiques like to walk around with their shirts off um and that's why peter usually walked around without his shirt on just to show them what they could have with a little yeah. bit of work exactly all you gotta yeah. do is just a couple push-ups in the morning and you're good thank you thank you and then drop down and freaking get some ground balls it's fine Boom. there you go Pete. to my shortstop sean by the way <laughs> hey love playing behind you because you knew there was an action <laughs> Love I got a question it. for you. Okay, yeah. I'm going to start this off with a question. Wait, we need to explain why we have him on this week. It was a significant. Okay. This, it was a significant week, and and when this airs, um, you would have officially retired from baseball. And I think it would have been about a week and a half by then. But I mean, that especially, you know, Peter and I obviously both live in Atlanta, and yep, yep. you were just all over the storylines and people were the Braves the Braves fans are phen phenomenal but they were just celebrating the living daylights out of you whenever you were up and it was mm -hmm. so cool to see how much that fan base embraced you but holy smokes you had such a crazy career and a career that these are the kind of careers that Peter loves talking about more than anything on this planet yep so we want to congratulate you on a on a really fun and unique and um incredible career and everything Thank that you, you accomplished and uh now you get to sleep so congratulations yeah. on that as well i appreciate it yeah i have a two-year-old though so no you do you do not get to sleep still two more years yeah yeah so yay i appreciate it don't talk about what you're doing yet that's at the end mm. okay i want you to start i want you to tell me because i see my career in three separate parts there was the first part where i thought the direction was going a certain way and then there was the middle part where it basically just dropped off the face of the earth. And then there was the third part where I was basically a redemption project. Right. There's no way that when you first got to the show or when you first started your baseball career that you saw it go in the way that it did. But talk me through those first couple of years, like how drafted through the minor leagues, got to the big leagues and then. Yeah. So, you know, drafted in, in 2004 by San Diego and, it, it almost seems like the regular back then was you go to every single affiliate and you yeah. kind of spend every year. So when I first signed I came out of Juco ball um, junior college for two years. So I was 19 when I signed, I had just turned 20 um, a month after I had signed with the Padres. So I literally, I went to um, extended spring training, which I thought was just regular spring training at the time for like four <laughs> days. Cause I had no clue what I was <laughs> doing so i went i went to the um, spring training complex for four days and then short season started so i went straight to eugene oregon was my first professional experience which was super cool 
you know, I, we all bought bikes from like the Goodwill store and we, we <laughs> rode by uh, University of Oregon every day to get to our field. Super Amazing. old school stadium, really neat experience. But um, and then after that, it was like, you know, it was kind of normal to go to every affiliate. So the next year I went to Fort Wayne, Indiana for the whole year. The following year, I went to Lake Elsinore um, in 2006 in the Cal League. 2007, I got to San Antonio. Um, and that was my first time um, ever really struggling in pro ball. So mm -hmm. I end up at uh, the All-Star break, was sent back down to Lake Elsinore and was able to finish strong and got invited to the Hawaii Winter League, which was probably one of the funnest uh, baseball experiences of my life. But uh, that following year, I went back to San Antonio in 2008, and that's when I got called up for the first time. So I'm four years wow. into my in, four years into my career. I'm 23. Well. I had just turned 24, like five days prior. So boom, I'm a 24 year old. I get called up. I'm with the San Diego Padres. I have hall of fame teammates, Greg Maddox. And, you know, I'm, I'm playing, you know, with all these guys, like, and it was obviously a dream come true to get up there. So like you had mentioned, like my mindset was, dude, I'm about to spend the next 10 years in the big leagues. Here's my opportunity. You know, um, I end up becoming kind of like a platoon guy. We had another guy who, faced uh mainly righties Luis Rodriguez he was a switch hitter and we kind of flip flop uh shortstop and I would face all the lefties so that season ended you know I had very minimal ABs but you know I was there for, for two months um I thought I played really good defense and I went to the Arizona Fall League and they got me on as the fourth outfielder and I'm like heck yeah man I'll go play in the Fall League I had never played outfield in my life so I was super <laughs> nervous about that but it was super cool because, you know, I'm National League. I'm like, I got to be able to play everywhere. And uh, during the fall league, they, they end up outrighting me. And I spent the next two years in AAA with, with the Padres. So, you know, again, I'm like fresh out of the big leagues. I'm like, I'm sure, sure, you know, surely I'll get another opportunity. So you, you felt at that stage that you were still just literally the next guy up, right? Absolutely. Like even when I went back to uh, – um, AAA with, with, with the Padres. I end up my, free, my first free agent year, which uh, minor league free agents after six years, you become. So I was set to become a minor league free agent. And then I was coming off my best minor league season um, for me personally at that time in 2010. So I was kind of hoping for another September call up and get another shot. Um, that didn't happen. And I end up becoming a free agent. And as crazy as it sounds, 2011, so I signed in 2004, 2011, I signed with the Mariners and that was my first ever big league camp. So wow. I was never in big league camp with the Padres. Um, but with that said, I went to every single game. Technically, I was not really ever invited with San Diego. But you were back up for every day. Literally, they would cart me over from my game. I would leave like the sixth inning of the minor league game on the backfield. They would cart me over in like the fourth or fifth inning. Meanwhile, you could hear everyone who's batting in the big league stadium. You could hear, you know, the crowd go crazy. And then they come and they're like, hey, we need Kazmar, this guy and this guy. Like, let's go. We hop on a cart and then we end up playing seven, eight, nine. So it was, it, it was cool, though. Like for, for those people, that means that you so that changes what, what happens is you get a daily meal money during spring training. You don't get paid, but you get daily meal money. Uh oh, uh oh. The whole time in San Diego, I didn't get paid one day. I you you look at my spring training numbers. I played like 160. I played a full season. The whole time with San, Diego, I probably played in 50, 60 games. I didn't get paid one time. Wait, how? Why? How does that? Why? I, well, luckily, our great players of, of the associations uh, changed that. Unfortunately, it was after I left the Padres. Um, to where now, if you get called up now, you get paid, you get, you get okay. big league milk money for that day. That's what I was going to say. I do not recall ever getting major league meal money from the Padres. How much do you get if you're a minor league camp? It's like, it used to be, the difference used to be somewhere between $20 a day minor league camp, a hundred bucks a day yes. around in major Roughly. league camp. Yeah. So when you, when you get brought over from the minor league side over to the big league side, you instantly get an, ingre an increase in that pay of okay. 80 bucks. So you basically go from eating at Taco Bell to grabbing yourself maybe a nice steak from Bennigan's. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you go up a room. <laughs> What'd you say? 
up a room. <laughs> Are y'all on your own for the three meals? As far as spring training goes? Yeah. Are you eating lunch there? Are you eating, do they have like a clubhouse? Yeah, no, we're, we're fed pretty well. I mean, for the most part, um, I mean, if we're talking about spring training, breakfast and lunch are, are definitely provided. Yeah. Depending on if you're, if you're on the road, you know, usually it's a, a sandwich or Chick-fil-A, but for the most, you're on your own for dinner, but you're getting paid. You're getting meal money. I'll take a hundred dollars for dinner. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm in. I'm thinking that you're like, okay, well, at least you're getting some money during spring training. So you don't get some money yeah. during spring training. So what was your first ever big league camp? Was it with the Braves? Oh, no, no it was with Seattle. Okay. So you went, did you go from that point on, it was big league camp every year? No. So, so I was big league camp with Seattle. 2012, I signed with the Mets. Did you really? I was not in big league camp. But again, I, I literally went over there pretty much every day. Uh, and and kind of backed up with the Mets that year in 12, 2013, no, 14, no, with the Braves. Uh, I think my first major league camp was after Snit got the, the big league job. And, and I think he fought pretty hard for me, which was amazing. He was able to get me into camp like the last four or five years with the Braves. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it ended up paying off great. And I, I uh, thank Snit every day for for allowing me to be over, be over in big league camp with those guys. We're a big snit pod. Oh yeah. He's the best. Yeah. People ask what makes snit snit. And it's stories like that, that makes snit snit. Cause everyone that's has dealt with him has a story just like that. And, and to be honest with you, my career probably wouldn't have gone as long as it was without that man. So, mm -hmm. and I hope he knows that I've, I'm pretty sure I've relayed that to him, but there's no way I would have made it the last four, four or five years without that guy having my back. He's so good, man. He really is. Yeah. Just a good, good person. And it's just treats his people of so well, like, man, it's amazing. Like, you know, obviously watching, you know, the playoffs the last few years, but you know, the world series watching all his interviews, it's like, he's the same. That's him. Like, <laughs> that's, that's exactly who he is. He's yeah. the best. Like he really is. Yeah. He's the same way, even, even in minor leagues, he was, he was that way, you know? One of great. my like favorite snip moments, it was in 18 when they clinched after, you know, being bad for a long time. And I was doing my interview with him down on the field. Yes, sir. I was there. <sighs> Love that for us. Love that for us. He heard the crowd start cheering really loud and the game was well over. So he looked up at the Jumbotron to see um, what they were cheering for. And it was our interview. They were cheering for him whenever his face popped up oh, onto the Jumbotron cool. and he got choked up and I'm not emotionally stable. So like, if he gets choked up, I'm like, oh no, this <laughs> <laughs> isn't, right. if you go down, I go down too. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, I mean, and I feel like it just took fans so long to come around to him. And it took so many stories like this and hearing guys like Nick Markakis went to battle for him. You know, I mean, like yeah. you hear guys that did stuff like that. And then fans were like, oh, maybe we need to welcome this guy a little bit. Yeah. better." Well, again, I think, and again, to kind of bring up the interviews he had, you could definitely tell as much as, and I was kind of in the same boat, like the way this year went, like, it was like, okay, try not to think about it. Like, we understand this is crazy and we've, you know, like Snit, he's been in the organization for 45 plus years. He spent majority of that time in the minor leagues, you know, kind of along the same lines as myself. So I, like when I got called up earlier, I'm trying not to really think about it, but you could tell like in his interviews, you like it, it's hitting him like everything he went through, everything like he sacrificed. Mm -hmm. And it was so neat to see, you know, when he did, did get emotional, it's like you could totally tell that's definitely hitting him. And it was, I mean, couldn't have happened to a better person, honestly. Yeah. How did that phone call go? Because he was he was the one that called you. So cool. Um, so I got I was super lucky um, that I was able to travel with the team for um, the cover. What was that? The taxi squad. Mm -hmm. So there was five of us who who we were able to travel with the big league team on the road. Um, and it was only on the road that they would send guys in case of, you know, obvious outbreaks or injuries mm -hmm. or, or, or whatnot. So we are in Chicago. Uh, the first game there was 
it was so cool. Like I got to take VP with the team. I'm shagging at Wrigley Field. I find a ball in the Ivy still. I have it to this day. I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever, like, this is unbelievable. Like I'm at Wrigley field. Right. So that game goes on. Ozzy Albies uh, was a little banged up going into that game, but not thinking anything of it. And then he fouls that ball off his leg and, you know, Ozzy's, you know, I was able to, to play with him for a few years. He was one of the tougher guys um, mm. that I played with and he was down for him for a while. Um, and he ended up, I don't know if he finished the game or came out. I want to say he came out and I don't know if it was the same game or the game after, but Ender pulled his hammy. Mm. So then I'm like, damn, dude, they're down two position players. I called my wife. Like, I was like, Hey, I don't know. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> like I'm like one of the position players here. Like this would be so wild. Like if, if this happened. So, um, it did kind of cross my mind, but I didn't expect like, the, the phone call or anything well how could you after everything that you've done and everything exactly. and that hasn't happened yeah just the fact that like i was there like i was not content with it but i'm like this is so cool like i'm on the taxi yeah. squad like yeah. i get to freaking watch <laughs> the big ball. Like, this is insane but so it's literally like two three hours after the game and snit calls and i'm like oh sh-. i'm like this i mean why else would snit be calling me he's like hey uh can you come to my room <laughs> I wanted to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, so uh, crazy. Sorry, I get emotional. No, 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 do not amazing. apologize, dude. So, anyway, I call my wife on the elevator. <sighs> Hold on. I didn't think I was going to do this. Damn. Uh, I think we're all about to cry now. No, no, it's not even. It's it's cool, man. It's cool to think about. Like, it's, I've never thought about it in like a really cool way. So, my fault. I definitely, no, I didn't think that was going to happen. So, I call my wife on the elevator and I'm like, Snit just called me to his room. Like, this is crazy. I, he, I knock on the door. He answers. He's got a bottle of wine and uh, <laughs> two glasses. And he sits me down and uh, you know, he told me I was going to be activated the next day. And I was like, I obviously was speechless for like 30 minutes. Um, you know, we just, and, and we sat there and we talked ball. We, we sat there and talked about um, the grind um everything he's gone through everything i've gone through and uh super emotional obviously and uh probably you know besides my kids one of the the greatest you know greatest baseball experiences of my life for sure Mm. sorry i don't ever say sorry dude I had no clue how I could do that, man. My bad. We're fine. We're fine. We can redo that. And I don't. Let me tell you. I know exactly how you feel. Listen to me. I know exactly how you feel, right? So Snick called me. Snick called me in 15. He was the one that told me. And of all the call ups that I've had from all the people and all the things that meant the most, it was that call from Snit. After everything that I'd been, I'd never expected to be get, to get back there again. And I'm like, and Snit was the one that was able to call me and go, "Hey, listen, man, I, you know, you, you, I need, they need you back in Atlanta." I was like, "Oh my god, like here we go again." So, dude, I know exactly what that feels like. I know how good that that feeling is, and and don't ever apologize for for, <laughs> for for telling that story. And I hope you get emotional every time because it's something that it means so much, and it, and everyone needs to know how much that 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 means to not just Snit too, because he's been through it all with all of us. Yeah. yeah, he really has. He knows what it's like. Yeah. Dugout Mugs is doing a really big giveaway. Yay! This giveaway mm. includes autographed items, big autographed items from Mariano Rivera, Pudge Rodriguez, Juan Soto, many more players. Whoa. All you have to do to enter is text BFCM to 85311. That's BFCM to 85311 to enter this giveaway. So the giveaway will be announced live on their social medias between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It's only two days. 
Right. So on top of texting BFCM to 85311 to enter, make sure to follow Dugout Mugs across their social media platforms in order to stay in loop with the winner announcements. Yeah. Lastly, we know that Dugout Mugs get a crazy amount of orders, so the product supply runs out really quick. So Fast. when you text them, they're also going to send you a secret discount code Ooh. that you can use in order to get your holiday shopping done early before it's too late and their products uh, have all run out. So last time I'll say it, text BFCM to 85311 now to enter the dugout mugs giveaway make sure to follow them and then make sure to use that secret discount code that they will text you back with in order to get all of your holiday shopping done early for people who aren't as familiar with with your story uh we know a lot of the people who watch and listen are, are probably braves fans but Everybody knows Brian Snicker now, you know, been in the organization for 40 plus years, minor leagues, every single coaching position you could have on that staff. Um, now he's obviously the Braves manager, but Sean, you became the all-time AAA leader, July 31st, 2021. And is that, was that for at bats? Wait, Maddie, am I reading this wrong? So yeah, he became the all-time hits leader this July for the Braves AAA there's also like a plethora of other crazy statistics. Read them out, please. He's the all-time AAA hits leader for the Braves with 675 hits, uh, all-time leader in at-bats with over 2,500, second in doubles with over 130, third in games played, 750, fourth in RBIs with almost 300. Just crazy. So you and Snit had a lot of time together because Snit was the manager down there. So that's, if, if you aren't as familiar with these stories, that's why they're so special and they're so emotional and, and why Snit does mean so much to a lot of these guys. Uh, but man, Correct. I mean, I have so many questions. Um, first of all, do you get a ring? Do you know? Yes. I, yes. Can we confirm that? Cause I don't Confirmed. know. Confirmed. All right, done, yes. Confirmed. You were on the squad this year. You 100% will get a, a World Series ring. I've had a lot of people ask me, and I, you know, obviously assumed I do, but I've never really had confirmation. But if it's coming from Peter Moylan, then yes. Love that. You are going to get a ring, my friend. That is, how good does that feel? I, I tell you what, it's like, you know, I, I go back to 1989, I believe. It was David Justice's uh Rookie year, his first ever at bat. I could be wrong, but it could have been one of his ABs. I'm five at the time. And he strikes out. This is my first baseball memory. He strikes out. And I, I don't know why. Like, I probably because I'm super emotional, but I felt bad for him. And I was like, that's my favorite player. 1990, he becomes rookie of the year, right? So, growing up in Las Vegas, having TBS, David Justice, who I'm rooting for. I was the biggest Braves fan you could possibly wow. imagine. So you go through the 1992 NLCS walk-off by Francisco at when I was, what, seven, eight years old, you know, reliving that with my dad, like us jumping around. Like we were, I was diehard. Like I had every, every starter jacket, starter hat, you, Braves gear you, you still could have possibly those. imagine. I wish I, I have pictures and videos of me in it, but. Those would be pretty dope now. I have my first ever David Justice jersey, which is okay. probably going to fit my, probably fits my five year old. But, <laughs> um, you know, so one to even just play in the Braves organization was was a dream come true for me. So this year, like in spring training, putting the big league uniform on, I'm like, this is insane. Like I'm the biggest, you know, I was the biggest Braves fan growing up, and then so that day in Wrigley, putting putting on the uniform like officially was. I mean, you talk about a dream come true. It definitely will happen that day. Okay. Another question that I wrote down that yeah. I wanted to ask. You mentioned, um, you know, how you played with Ozzy for a few years. And yeah. that made me think like, holy smokes, you've seen so many talented guys come through. You've played alongside Acuna. You've, you've played behind Mike Soroka, behind Max Freed with Ozzy Albies. Who, who have you loved playing the most alongside or, or with when you've been? I mean, you obviously named 
the most talented guys that, mm. that I'd ever played with. Um, quick story, when Acuna came up, he came up, I think, shortly. I think it was the same year Ozzy started there. I could be wrong about this. but So Acuna comes up to AAA at 19 in July, I believe. And the first month I saw Acuna play, I'm like, okay, like this is one of the better players like I've ever played with. He's 19, like he's young, but like this dude's flying around. Like my favorite part about Acuna, just real quick, is his base running. I don't know why. Watching him run is phenomenal. His legs move so fast that it's almost like it's almost like his legs. You know, <laughs> you, have you seen the Incredibles movie with that little kid that runs fast? Yes. And when he gets going, it's like he bows back. Do it, Peter. That's how Acuna runs. It's like <laughs> It's like the Incredibles it really, kid. It's incredible. Go. Yeah. He he it's he is certainly a different um, human. But September, early September is the end of minor league season, so I had pretty much most of July and August to watch him play. And by August, I'm like, okay, this is the best player I've ever seen. So to be honest, what the Braves did, what Alex did at the trade deadline, I mean, to lose Acuna and still go out and win the World Series, I mean. I'm what are they like next year? Like it's, it's gotta be world series or bus. I mean, you're yeah. you've got arguably the best player in the game who could possibly be back, you know, hopefully, you know, towards the beginning of the season, probably looking more towards the middle, but Acuna, I mean, you name Austin Riley, mm -hmm. um, Austin Riley put up numbers like that every year when I was with him. So what he was doing was the same exact stuff he was doing there. Obviously it took him a little time to adjust. He, made the adjustment like he you know he really did and it was phenomenal i read that as the reason why austin riley was able to turn it around in the big leagues this year was because you got called up is that what we're mm -hmm. that's how exactly what happened right yeah i mean that's what you I said it i thought it but you said it you should take full credit for that I it's mean, similar to the impact that i made with the dodgers in 2013 when Puig exactly. and i got called up at the same time they went on a run and i thought it was me but everybody says it was Puig. I don't know what yeah. happened, but no, no. Okay. Your name got lost in that, and it just—it's not fair. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. So, like, on this podcast, I talk every other episode about how much I love Mike Soroka and Max Reed, and how good of guys they are, and how they're the kind of guys who you want to see succeed. You want to—they're just so good on and off the field. Is there somebody who might not? be in that realm of, I don't want to say in that realm of talent, but somebody who was just such a good guy that you root for constantly. Yeah. I'm, but I think the whole world knows, and it's, it's, you know, like you mentioned, Max Freed's and it's, it's so true. The, the Sorokas, but you know, Austin Riley comes to mind right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Ozzy Albies comes to mind. And those, those two guys, they go out every day, you know, they play as hard as anyone on the field yet you get in the clubhouse with them. And it's like, you know, for me, look at it, I'm like, dude, you guys are freaking superstars. Like, and they don't act like that whatsoever. And it's really neat to watch. Um, very humble. Um, same thing with Dansby. Dansby uh, comes to mind. He's always been, you know, it's just guys that are I'm able to walk up and have normal conversations with. It's really, really neat to watch. And then to see them on the big stage and to, to rise up their talent. And it was really phenomenal to watch. Um, but those are a few guys just to name, but. You know, I think the Braves did an amazing job because when I got there in 13, um, I think they were a playoff team, maybe 14 and 15. I could be wrong, but, you know, the, the direction of the minor leagues, it wasn't very talented. And I really kind of saw a complete 360 turnaround as far as the pitching that started coming. And then you got guys like Ozzy and Acuna and Riley mm -hmm. position player wise and then the trade for Dansby, and it's like you got four young studs, yeah. and then you have all these pitchers start coming up, and they were getting to Gwinnett so quick. It was actually it, Gwinnett, when I first got there, we weren't win, winning a whole lot of ball games, and then all of a sudden these young arms started coming, and, I mean, you could pencil us in for 75, 80 wins in Gwinnett. It was so much fun to play baseball. It's a lot better when you win, obviously. So, uh, But it was really neat to kind of see a whole organization kind of do a 360, uh, use their young guys, just like they did back in the 90s with with, with their pitching, um, with Smoltz and Maddox and, and uh, Glavin and all those guys. So uh, really, really fun to kind of witness firsthand. You, you're retired now, right? Yeah. You've, you've given some thought to, to the journey that, that was the last 20 years. 
Is there one or two moments that stand out as the ultimate, like the the two best or three best moments that you can look back on? Because I I did some soul searching the minute I retired, and there was there was, I picked <laughs> three, and I and they were really cool. Right? Yeah. I mean, like you mentioned, it's like while I was playing, like I try not to think of anything. You know what I mean? It's like it's I just wanted to play baseball. Like that's it. That was my you know that was my dream when I was four or five years old. First time I like could actually remember like playing baseball. I fell in love with it. So like, that was my ultimate goal. You know, like we had mentioned earlier, like my first year in 2008, obviously was one of the greatest memories I'd have playing baseball. Cause I got called up and fulfilled this childhood dream of playing in the major leagues. So from there, I was like, I'm, you know, 10 years in the big leagues, which I think everyone should have that goal is to play 10 years in the big leagues. Mine story didn't really work out that way, but it's like, now that I'm retired, I'm done playing baseball. I know I'm not going to really play anymore. It's like, I kind of have reflected on that over the last few months and it's, re- you know, it's really neat. Like it's, it's a, it is a cool story. It's nothing I, you know, tried to do. Like I tried to play in the big leagues for 10 years. It's just not the way it worked out at the end of the day. The best way I could put it is like, I just wanted to play baseball. Like that's it. Like I really just love playing the game, whether it was triple a, obviously you want to play in the big leagues. Um, but to have that opportunity again this year, uh, I think, that's probably at the top of my list um, as far as baseball memories go. Um, I do got to go. I got to revert back to 2003, winning the junior college world series um, and spending, you know, being around college guys or in college. And like those become some of your best friends for life Mm -hmm. and winning that. And, you know, that was my first ever ring. So that's definitely uh, top of the list is, is when the uh, junior college world series, but yeah, you know, the, Obviously, this year, I think Trump's at all. I decide to retire, and then my guys go out and win a World Series. And fortunately enough, I was able to get that look again this year, and now I get a ring. Like, it's insane to think about. It really is. It's such a cool story, and you deserve every part of it. The only reason you get to stick around for this long, you put up numbers, obviously, but you're a good person, man. You're one of the best people yeah. I've been around, honestly. And you wasn't it you that told me that as long as you have a uni, you have a chance? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, see? I love that. We're making a shirt. We're making a shirt. <laughs> Let's you are go. the ultimate example of that. I was I was told, luckily, from an early, you know, early on in my professional career. And I'll give a shout out to uh, a lot of people know who Will Venable is. He's, he's a bench coach in Boston now. Yep. But his dad was my hitting coach for a good four or five years. And I'm telling you, he would say that like once a week. He's like, you got a number, you got a jersey on your back. You have a chance. And like we're in low A. I'm like, okay, man. Like we're in we're in Fort Wayne, Indiana, grinding right now. It's 30 degrees out and snowing. Like I just want to go in the clubhouse <laughs> because if I hit another ball at the end of the bat, I'm gonna cry. Like it's not where I want to be. But no, it's super cool, man. Like and I I use it. I've used that, and I've told guy. I, you know, I've, it's crazy. Like that I told you that. Like mm. you know and. It's like, dude, if you have a number, you got a jersey on your back, you do. You really do have a chance. And I'm a true testament to that, honestly. Um, and it's crazy to think about because I just wanted to play, you know, but it is very true. It really is because you never know when the next opportunity in this game could come. And, you know, it happened for me. So it was pretty cool. Take us Amen. through the, the things that you were weighing when you were trying to decide if you were going to retire. Like what factors played into that? Definitely. I mean, I, I gotta be honest when, you know, you, you had, uh, was it 19 or well, 2020 COVID hit. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me being a baseball lifer, like literally lived and breathed and did everything baseball. Like, I'm like, damn dude, like, is that it? Like, is that the last time I get to play baseball? Like, and so it was pretty emotional because you, I had no clue what was going to happen after 2020. Yeah. Are they going to cancel 21 uh, minor leagues? And so for the Braves, honestly, to give me an opportunity to go back in 2021 and invite me to spring training, like I'm a 37 year old, you know, stud infielder, you know, luckily I was able to do everything, but like, you know, that's older for uh, baseball players. So mm-hmm. for them to give me the opportunity uh, to, to come back and play was, was, was pretty crazy. Um, so again, when I got to play, I had a good spring training. So I'm like, hell yeah. You know, I like, I leave spring training, you know, not expecting to get called up or anything. I knew I was going to Gwinnett, but 
retirement never really crossed my mind. It, at least like I wasn't fighting it. Yeah. So, you know, the call up happens, all that goes down the first month. And then I get back to Gwinnett. I'm out right off the, the roster. And, you know, it's kind of back to normal, like where I'm back in Gwinnett and I'm doing my thing. I'm playing all over the field. And I got to be honest, that spring training, now I could say it was the hardest, like on my butt. I, mm. everything was hurting. <laughs> and, mm. you know, luckily I didn't say anything because, you know, I was playing well. And I'm like, I can't say anything. Like, what if? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, my ankle was killing me, my mm-hmm. arm, like, and I'm like, hey, that year off, really, you know, I thought I'd be like a little more refreshed. No, it was total mm-hmm. opposite. Like it, it just hit me like, and, um, you know, I battled through like, it is what it is, but it wasn't until halfway during the season is when I started battling like, Hey, you know, this might be it. Um, the product I was taking out to Gwinnett, like I, I wasn't playing the best baseball that, you know, I was accustomed to playing over the last few years. So I think that was one um, reason. Obviously, the top priority were my kids. Um, you know, when I finally did decide, like, okay, this is this is probably it. I got to be honest, it wasn't really till the last few weeks of the season, um, mm-hmm. and it wasn't till that last week when I made that last phone call to my wife. I was like, "Yeah, come out for the last game. Like, this is it. I'm good. Like, my body's killing me. Like, I'm tired of getting." 97 blown up on my hands like <laughs> i can't get the bat around i've ordered smaller bats lighter bats it's just not working so you know i've always tried to be a, re- a realist in this game and you know i wasn't playing good baseball you know mm. um at least offensively um so it, it it definitely played a role in my decision um but my body you know my performance and most importantly my kids uh those are the three reasons um, that I, I decided to do it. And, um, it was tough. It was something that I fought for weeks, but mm-hmm. I, definitely the right decision. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to the next chapter for sure. Yeah. Well, do you think that you as a 24 year old rookie right now would bring so much more value to a club based on what you've been able to do throughout your career, but in the way the game's moving? Uh, if I knew what I know now, just as far as the, because you can play anywhere, you can, you're like the Absolutely. ultimate utility guy. And I feel like that's what every team values right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you, you kind of see the game going that way. You look at the Dodgers, man, those guys, <laughs> I mean, you got MVPs. It's insane to watch. Like, mm-hmm. And, you know, it, that's got to be a manager's dream, right? Like when you could plug in guys in three, four or five different places, like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, it just gives you so much more value in my opinion. Um, you know, drafted as a shortstop, I was, you know, I'm going to be a shortstop my whole career. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. and like with the Braves, obviously having Freddie Freeman, you know, obviously the greatest first baseman in Braves history, not a lot of free agents are signing over there. So at the triple mm-hmm. a level, it's like, you know, free agents signed to go somewhere hoping for an opportunity at the big level, a uh, big league level. You got Freddie Freeman, who the guy refuses to come out of ball games. Yep. Well, guess what? Everyone knows that. And they're not going to sign there. So, Opening day, first baseman, uh, probably the shortest in history. <laughs> um, but it was like, damn, I've never played first base. But it was so cool because now I, you know, I get to play first, second, third, mm-hmm. short. You know, Camargo comes down, he plays short. I go to second. Ozzy comes up, I go to third. He goes, and it was like that. It was so much fun for me. Like it really awesome. was, and I'm glad I got to play everywhere. And you know, not to mention, I finally got three innings uh, pitching. Get boy. Hey. So I don't know if you guys dug that deep, but I do have a zero. <laughs> and I have to add that was probably a top five of why I did retire because I didn't want to get back in there and inflate that ERA. I got a zero. Yep. I have my first strikeout ball. It's in my trophy case. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. What a legend. <laughs> You're a legend. I love that for you. It was mainly knuckleballs. Ooh, yes. knuckleballer. Yeah. Love that. I might come back. You never know, knuckleball. <laughs> yeah, it's you, you might in about a month when you're like, man, I don't know. When he's, no, it's, it'll be longer than that. It'll be around February when you start to get that flutter. You're like, oh, I feel like something's missing. When you're not getting prepared for spring training, you're like, uh, whoa. Let's get these knuckles ready. It's knuckleball time. Let's go. <laughs> when was the last time you missed the spring training besides 2020? Well... 
I, I went to spring training that year. We were there right. at least, you know, what was it? Three, three weeks. So Oh four, Oh four. No, no, no. Oh four. Oh four. No. So 17 spring trainings. I went to, I believe it was. It's insane. If you look at like, okay. So a normal off season for you, how is it? I mean, do you have trips planned? Like, what are you doing now that it's not really, it's your lifetime, you know, like normally you just get yeah. to the off season and you're like, okay, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Like, how do they differ? You know, they're all pretty similar, you know, as far as like the minor league seasons usually go, like we're done in September. So it's like, I get back to Arizona. Luckily, like we have a pool here at the house. So like that whole September and into October, like it's, we're out barbecuing enjoying the pool you know, reflecting on the, the season that just happened. Like, yeah, but now dude, you've got no, you've got no more season to look forward. What does what this off season look? Well, like? I had the greatest season of my life. I got back, I wore a Braves uniform. So this off season, I get to reflect on that. Um, but then it's like, you, you go right into the holidays and it's like the holidays go like that. Next, you know, it's January. And then it's like, yeah. Oh shit, I should probably pick up a baseball yeah. and start uh, training. Right. Um, because I think everyone wants to start training, but holidays always super tough to like get into that routine. So I don't, I think normally around January, you know, you're going to get fat. Uh, you're going to get fat. I'm going to try not to little blow it out this, this season. If you're going to you do it, I want to see at least a couple chins next time we talk, oh. like, get some Thanksgiving, get a couple I've of meals. I've always had good metabolism, but I tell you what, I, I, I get I put everything in my coffee, so I think it's starting to catch up. Honestly, you need to try to put. I drink iced coffee every morning, but instead of creamer or sugar, I put Premier Protein in it. The protein shakes, and it's so good. And it's See, thirty grams of protein. You are you are butchering coffee when you say stuff like that, Kelsey. That is true. You understand that I own a cafe, and you're saying just whack protein powder in there. <laughs> protein in there. It's like throw carrots into like what? what come on, man. Anyway. I'm sorry, Pete. It's just You're what okay. I do. I got cinnamon oh, roll so in here today. All right. That's, well, that's different. Hey, everybody. Producer Maddie Mass in the big box here, taking a quick break from this incredible interview to shout out our friends over at Elgato. They aren't just making this interview possible, but they make every Farm to Fame episode possible with their wide array of equipment. And let me tell you, Elgato is ready for Black Friday, and they're offering some incredible discounts to everybody in the John Boy Media community. I can speak specifically to the Wave 3 microphone, which we have used across the entirety of John Boy Media. It's truly a premium microphone that offers excellent sound quality, as you've heard, and comes with its own digital mixing software to really give your audio that extra touch. Additionally, it includes a built-in button for easy and efficient muting and unmuting when needed. So whether you're streaming gameplay, leveling up your professional work from home setup, or recording content for videos and podcasts, Elgato has items that can help you create better and reach your maximum potential. So now is the time to upgrade that setup with Elgato. Whether it's for you or a gift for a loved one in this holiday season, make sure to grab what you need. A face cam, a Wave 3 microphone, stream deck, green screen. I know that Peter and Kelsey can't stop talking about their key lights and soundproofing wave panels that they both use in every single episode. And then you always see Peter moving his microphone arm all around throughout uh, each of our episodes as well. We can't recommend these products enough. So to access Elgato's Black Friday deals of up to 30%, click the link in this YouTube or podcast description. Their deals will be live from November 25th to November 29th. So make sure to head over there right now once you finish listening to the rest of this interview. Okay. Just like whenever you got, we talked about all of the young, talented guys that you got to play with in Gwinnett. But what was it like whenever you got up to the big league clubhouse and you walk in and I can imagine all of those guys just like freaked out. What was it like seeing the reaction of all the guys mm -hmm. you've seen? You know what? It's it, I'm glad you, you asked that because I think the best memory of all, you know, of, of me getting called up to Atlanta this year was was all the love and support. Obviously, walking into that clubhouse. You know, I was with those guys all spring, so mm -hmm. it was it was cool. It wasn't like I was walking in and didn't know anyone. Like I knew 
99% of the guys that were, yeah. were there. And I had been traveling with them. I had spent all spring. I was on the taxi squad. So they were so pumped up and, and that's when it like was really hitting me, um, was, was seeing, you know, the support and love that they were sharing with me, but also, you know, guys like Pete, um, you mentioned Mark Kakis. I mean, you talk about a guy, a pros pro, like for him, he didn't have my phone number and for him to reach out and shoot me a text and, you know, congratulate me. Like those are probably the best memories I have from that is, is all the love and support that I got, especially from, you know, guys that I, you know, were grinding with in Gwinnett. Um, but more importantly, like the guys I've played with over the last 20 years. Well, and the guys whose careers you've impacted, whether you would admit that or agree with that, like you have made such a big impact on so many guys who have come through that organization. And it, I, I would love to like get them all on here and for them to tell you what it was like whenever you mm-hmm. got called up. Funny you say that. Uh, can you let everybody in, please, Matt? Let everybody <laughs> in. Here we go. And Come on. The Oprah moment. Here's everyone. <laughs> Hearing <laughs> them talk about how happy they probably were for you in that moment would be so cool because it was probably just super special for them because I know they all just adore the living daylights out of you. Can confirm. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, they do. No, I, you know, hopefully it not. It wasn't like I went out of my way or my intentions to to you know. But I, you know, obviously being the older guy in AAA for the last six years, like I knew, you know, it wasn't like I'm trying to be a mentor type, but it's like I'm helping these guys navigate through. You know, it happens naturally. It it, it does, and yeah. I, and and I felt like it was natural, and that's all I tried to do was help these guys out best I could. And you know, fortunately, those guys. I mean, we're talking about superstars. They approached me. They asked me questions and it was like, yeah, man, this is all right. This is what I do. Like I just <laughs> freaking I tape it up and I go out there and freaking play, man. Like screw it. Like take four Advil. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. You'll be fine. You'll be yeah. Fine. No protein. I, the only thing I've taken in my career is that, by the way. <laughs> Uh, you, you should come back because there's plenty more out there. Anyway, here we go. We got a thing called we got a thing called Aussie Lang- lingo, where okay. I I give you a uh, a word and you try to tell me what the definition is. We guess what it means in English. You ready? Oh, damn. Snag. S N A G. I want to say a kiss. Kiss for Kelsey, Sean. Snag. Like I'm gonna have to go with a uh, snag the greatest woman in the world. And that is now my wife. I snagged her. She just walked in the room, didn't she? She just walked in the room. No, but she might watch this, so. (laughs) (laughs) Maddie? Snag. Snag, I'm going, when you are fishing and you get a fish, call that a snag. That's close. No, it's actually what we short, we call them sausages. Throw a couple of snags on the barbie. (laughs) Not shrimp. (laughs) Yeah, didn't Snags. see that coming. I like yeah. it. I like, like that, that one. Well, I like go. it just as much as Funker Doodle. Funk- yes. Funker. <laughs> Fair Dinkum. Yes, you're right. Fair Dinkum. <laughs> Sean, wow. buddy, my friend, I sincerely Hi. love you. You've been absolutely fantastic. Love you too. I cannot Appreciate thank you it. enough for uh, for giving us you an hour of your time. Yeah. Man. Of course, anytime. And really, congratulations on on everything. Yep, that means a lot. Thank you, guys. Your story has been so fun to follow along with, and we hope that what's next in this next chapter is just as exciting. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. means the world. Appreciate it. You're the man, dude. All right. Thank you, Sean. We love y'all. Farm on. Farm often. See ya.